아, 안녕하십니까. 아, 우선 오늘 이 자리에 초대, 초, 초대해 주신 한국고등교육재단에 감사드립니다. 특히 지난 1년 동안 아, 정세호 교수님께서 함께하신 한국고등교육재단의 국제학술 교류 지원 사업 덕분에 연구에 아, 필요한 많은 도, 도움을 얻을 수 있었습니다. 아, 그리고 이 자리에 참석해 주신 여러분도 아, 감사드립니다. 아, 화보란 아, 교류를 지대합니다. 저는 아직 한국어가 짧아서 아, 파표는 영어로 진행하도록 하겠습니다. 예, yeah, finish. <웃음> thanks, to my, thanks to my Korean tutor who wrote for me. <웃음> okay. Uh, I'd like to express my gratitude uh, to KFAS for having me here for one year. And first of all, I'd like to uh, take uh, a little bit saying about the, my research and life in Korea. So I stay in SNU for one year. And uh, during the one year, I study Korean language and join a lot of uh, academic events. And also, I joined the uh, uh, events and take a lot of uh, presentations. And also, I, I, uh, we participate a lot of activities uh, during KFAS run. So I really appreciate. It. And also, I travel a lot during the one, the, the last one year. And uh, there are three things I like to. I'm very proud of. The first thing I visit uh, uh, Sohae Udo. And uh, Peryongdo, Yenpyongdo, I'm a favorite island. I, I can see, uh, and I can understand the NLA lines to both Korea. And also, I visit Dukdo, and uh, I took six hours in the, in the boat. And uh, uh, it's very great to see and to land the Dukdo for just two minutes. <laughs> and uh, the, the big the most, the best things I'm proud of is I, I, I go along uh, through a parallel. There, there are 13 Tongyu uh, Tamonte across the parallel. I visit all of them with my Korean friend. And uh, uh, I, I can totally understand what the both Korean, why the both Korean uh, take care of this issue and also the reality of divided Korea. So this is why uh, my great uh, time when I was in Korea. Okay, so let's move, move to my topic. So uh, my topic is like uh, there's a new game in Northeast Asia. So I think every country and uh, uh, around the peninsula are having new thinking toward the peninsula. There will be a sea change brought about First of all, by the nuclear North Korea, and then by the U.S. making the rebellion policy uh, to Asia, and finally by the decision of the deployment of the Sad. So, all side policy toward the others has become a new game. So, let's talk about China. So, after the uh, decision of the deployment of Sad was made in July. And a lot of people ask me if China's policy toward the Korean Peninsula has changed. I think there's three things China will not change. The first thing, China still uh, stands for the maintenance of peace and stability of the Korean Peninsula. And China doesn't want to see the uh, Korean Peninsula in chaos. And second, China strongly opposes DPRK nuclear and the missile test. This means China will uh, strongly implement the UN uh, a resolution on North Korea. And uh, also, I have to say, China will continue to maintain traditional friendship with DPRK. Uh, what the mean for that? I think China's rapid economic development offer, uh, offers a lesson to DPRK that a socialist country does not necessarily to be poor. Also, there's a ev little evidence that DPRK has any desire to import uh, the China, Chinese model, it is true. China hopes to direct Pyongyang's attention back to their economy and help it finally find its own way to reform its economic uh, system. 
uh, and the last I added when the, I hear the decision of deployment of that. So China, I think, is rethinking of the ROK-US alliance uh, since the third uh, deployment in Korea. I think there's the three questions China want to know. Maybe South Korean friends can give me the answer. The first question is, will U United States and ROK alliance will solve this new North Korea uh, a problem by themselves? And uh, looks like uh, without thinking of thinking of China and the Russians' concern, and uh, the ROK UN alliance trying to address this issue by themselves. And second, everybody knows there is a big difference between uh, Japan US alliance and ROK US alliance. The the big difference I thought was uh, the ROK US alliance just uh, uh, against only North Korea's right, but since the decision made by ROK government recently, uh, Chinese asked themselves, will the ROK-US alliance is against other countries uh, besides North Korea? And the third question, uh, ROK always talk about, uh, you know, the President Park likes to talk about recently the regime change uh, in North Korea. Will ROK seek this strategy toward uh, North Korea? This is a three question, and China really concerned. And uh, our colleagues talk, already talk about the China-U.S. relationship. I think everybody knows. Uh, I think the rea reality of China-U.S. relationship is complex. China has worked with the United States in many regional and global forums, not least the East Asia Summit, the United Nations, the World Bank, the IMF, and the many other bilateral and the multilateral organizations and the regimes. So each country is a massive trade partner of the other, with their two ways trading trade surprise five hundred billion, a half trillion dollar in 2011, uh, 2011 for the first time. Uh, but there's no pro without denying there's uh, so many problems between China and the US. For US side, the rising power is resentful of previous, previ previously dominant power suspect and actual assistance, and the rising power can become impatient. Uh, from China's side, many people believe U.S. policies seek to contain and retard China's growth and frustrate the nation's emergence as a strong international actor to abort its national renewal. So if mistrust between the two countries is so deeply, I don't think there's a cooperation. The cooperation will be an uh, illusion. So I think China and the U.S. Has, have a long way to go, and, uh, but I don't believe there will be a direct conflict between the two countries. But I, actually, I want to say managing the two-party relationship is hard. Introducing the third parties increase complexity and risk. So by virtue of U.S. Uh, China respective history, leg le legacies of the Cold War, and a simple geographic location, each of country has a valued relationship and the local sensitivities and are pro problematic when we are dealing with the other. So North Korea makes the United States headache. At the same time, American interaction with China's neighbor are sensitive to, to Beijing. So Washington and Beijing have a restraining influence on, on friend alliance and uh, others whose actions can affect the uh, stability of U.S.-China relationship. So how to manage the third party is the biggest issue for maintaining good relationship for two countries. And let's take a look about the strategic patience in U.S. This is the U.S. side. And the Obama administration exercised its policy for seven years toward North Korea. And uh, it means the U.S. will not make any concession toward North Korea. But the strategic patience has one major flaw. It's that the United States will not, cannot, denuclearize the Korean Peninsula. Will it refrain from negotiation? Even those who 
a post negotiation should acknowledge, acknowledge as a former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton has the talking can be a form of containment. So uh, I think from Chinese perspective, the waiting game U.S. play can suspiciously like a disengagement and possibly indifference. So Obama's foreign policy legacy will be judged not only with, by his success in a rapprochement with Myanmar and Cuba and the nuclear deal with Iran and the withdrawal from war on terror, but also his policy toward North Korea. So the assessment above back the question, can the United States continue to pursue the strategic patience successfully? Unfortunately, the answer is not clear. If dangers of the United States become too great, the United States may be forced to abandon its principal stand and engage in bilateral talks. So when I was in DC, a lot of people talk about free North Korea, freeze the nuclear, nuclear program, then they will can talk with North, North, North Korea. But I don't think this is China's uh, stance. China's stance is the nuclear Korean Peninsula. Uh, for ROK side, everybody knows this is the ROK's policy toward North Korea recently. And uh, I don't want to explore it, and you, are, you know better than me, but I want to talk about the ROK and China. So ROK, uh, for the two career relationship, I think ROK should seek a creative, creative strategy that wisely mix sticks and the carrots. So ROK, for China, ROK relationship, I think we had a really great time working together. Uh, Chinese, president, Chinese government called your president uh, as an old friend, and the President Park visit China at the Victory Day in September, but unfortunately we are experiencing a really hardship. So China, China doesn't want to see peninsula in chaos, and ROK also doesn't want to be a place of great power, rivalry, and coalition. So I want to say if we both depends on only military and weapons, dra driving the diplomacy, compromising out of the decision-making process, then the mutual trust will be reduced. We still call it strategic partnership, so we should continue this uh, uh, partnership. And uh, for North Korea, I visited North Korea twice this year, and uh, uh, before, in the first time I visited North Korea in 2010, and I already visited North Korea like 12 times, so this year I visited two, two, uh, twice. Uh, first, uh, before the 77th Party Congress, you can see uh, in the middle I was, I was standing in Kim Il-sung Square, and I trying to uh, Im intimidate South Korean soldiers uh, standing still in 3A parallel. And, uh, but you can see I'm, I was very nervous. And, uh, and the second middle, you can see the above, in the bottom, in the middle, uh, I was in Pyongyang a train station with my SNU bag, and I, w I was also very uh, nervous because I, I scared North Korea. We all know this is a no, uh, SNU sword they have killed uh, back. So, and also I, ca I want to, the reason I want to show the picture, I want to see there's so many change in Pyongyang and in North Korea. And uh, you can see rich people and more and more and they can ride in horse in the horse riding club. And you can see more and more North Korean people using handphone. Uh, and uh, even they, they date with a girl. The men university student date with a girl by handphone. And there are so many interesting messages message between each other, just like uh, South Korea, Kamsa, Kamsa. There are so many interesting men message between them. And also they are uh, facing ROK US military alliance, you can see the car. And uh, uh, because of these exercises, the, the ROK, the North Korean people have to stop all activity to respond with this exercise. That's why they can have no time 
recently to focus on economy. And also the village, they have changed a lot because of the uh, uh, agriculture policy, new agriculture policy. Uh, I want to see North Korea trying to focus their economy uh, recently. Uh, so for the foreign policy, I think engagement with the United States is one of the priority in DPRK's foreign policy. And you can see there are a lo lot of North Korean officials talk about the US, uh, DPRK and the uh, uh, United States relationship. And they think uh, if finally the United States will hang, hang, shake hand with North Korea. I don't think it's true, but they, they totally believe. And second, they actively improve relationship with Russia and China. And uh, why they focus, why they are close to Russia, that is a question mark to me. But North Korean friends told me, say, uh, if, you, if a wife wants to know her husband, if husband, her husband truly loves her, uh, so uh, the, the, the wife should find a, another guy to test his husband, making the husband jealous. So, so that's why this is maybe North Korean strategy. They want China to be jealous and be closer with China. Uh, and uh, so my view is, my personal view is, economic development and social change in DPRK should become the key indicators for making policy toward North Korea. Because everybody's focused on North Korean nuclear test and weapon, but I think the economy and social has dramatic change recently. So we have the, the social change definitely will influence the decision-making process in North Korea. And we have to more concern about this and focus on their economy development. I don't think North Korea can have a sustainable uh, economic development because of sanction, but how they can survive themselves is a question mark. And the social change, they, they receive a lot of new information, especially young people. So uh, their idea is changed. So that's why I, I want to uh, people to to concern about this. And the Russian, we, I, I like to call Russian as a forgotten player in the Korean Peninsula. Uh, Russia has their own interest on peninsula and the capability to pursue them. During 2014 and, and 2015, Russian North Korean relationship have remarkably grown intensity. And my Russian friends always can go to North Korea recently, make, make me, making me very jealous. So they have a go to a lot of place, places Chinese cannot go. And uh, the, there has been flurry of high level exchange with Russia becoming the country most frequently visited by North Korea senior official. In November two, 2015, Moscow and Pyongyang signed agreement on preventing dangerous military activity. The, this agreement concludes at the level of two countries. General staff was an indication of increased military contact between Russia and DPRK. In February 2016, Moscow and Pyongyang concluded in an agreement on the transfer of the illegal migrant. This sensitive document was sent just a few weeks after North Korean nuclear test and a few days before plan long-range missile launch. So suggesting that even under that situation, Russia was keen to pursue political cooperation with North Korea regime. So on the economic front, they have a number of significant development. And the issue of North Korean debt to, to Russia was finally settled in May 2014, agreeing to write off 90% of the 11 billion debt. So in order to pro promote bilateral commerce, the Russian North Korean Business Council was set up. So uh, this development can show Russian and North Korea tie are now at their higher point since the collapse of the Soviet Union. And uh, uh, in particular, North Korea uh, expressed support for Russia over Crimea. In turn, Moscow defend the DPRK at the UNSC 
when it voted along with China against the inclusion of the issue of human rights in North Korea on US, UNSC agenda. So Moscow has their own goal in Korean Peninsula. I think uh, Russian friends always talk to me, say Russian plays second fiddle to, to China. And uh, uh, they look China and the United States action and they follow it. Uh, but I think in future, Russian will act as a, will will act as a constructive and independent player. And I think there's the two goals they really pursue. One goal is uh, denuclearization uh, in Korean Peninsula. A second, non-proliferation uh, for North Korea. And uh, also, they want to develop economy. They think economic uh, could be a leverage to a, for North Korea, so they are eager to develop this tool. And uh, so I think uh, there will be a new game in Northeast Asia around Korean Peninsula. I think there's a two lines uh, in Northeast Asia. The first line is the economy of Japan, South Korea, and China have made themselves heavily depend on each other. But there's evidence such as mutual dependence have been beneficial to them all with the growth of the economy. And after the Asian financial crisis in 1997, they are achieving closer and closer economic relationship. So uh, also, uh, I think the second thing is uh, the tendency to build economy, security, and other cooperative structure, original institutional in North, Northeast Asia. I think an American scholar called this uh, Asian way, Asian approach. Well, the country want to find their own way to build uh, an institution to manage the crisis. Uh, like we have a East Asian Summit, we, we have a ASEAN Regional Forum. And uh, this is the first line. And the second line, I think this uh, very obvious recently, the rising strategic competition are reducing mutual trust among the countries. And uh, uh, I don't want to see economic as a tool for manipulating the other uh, countries. I, I, I believe there's a two line, uh, it's not parallel, they interviewed each other very, very deeply. And uh, strategic competition will reduce our mu mutual trust and then influence the economic line and the cooperative line structure. And uh, also, the strategic, strategic competition, uh, if the strategic, strategic competition dominate in our decision-making process, then we'll we'll finally we'll, rule, rule, we'll be ruling the economic and uh, uh, cooperative line. So the line, the two lines should be uh, healthy, and so that's why I think both country, uh, all of the country around this area should make efforts. And finally, I, uh, how to achieve this uh, peace? Uh, I cite Chinese uh, works, and uh, this is a site, if we want to change others' behavior, we have to uh, talk Communication, communicate, and uh, uh, engagement uh, with others with seniority. So, uh, and then we can change their behavior. We can make them uh, do what we want to do. So this is a Zhong Yong. And finally, uh, I want to say communication and engagement is the best way to achieve. Uh, a great uh, achievement in Korean Peninsula. And I know there will be a seven, seven anniversary in Kim Il-sung University this year. And SNU also celebrated the 70 uh, anniversary in this year. I hope one day maybe KFAS can help. So the two best university in Korea can celebrate a 75 or 80 anniversary in Korean Peninsula. I will, I will be very happy and uh, jealous to see that. And uh, 
uh, I always talk to my South Korean friends, uh, uh, we can have a yaksu, uh, then drink Daytong Kong Maksu around the Daytong Kong uh, River. So I hope one day this dream can be true. Thank you.